Hey, how's it going guys? Looks like another installment of the Subaru build and as you guys can see, I've got a nice first top coat on. Really, I only like one top coat. Really for the sheer fact of I don't want a bunch of filler on the car. Bondo, filler, whatever you want to call it, to me it's just a bad word and something that's usually unneeded and it really shows your skill level on how much is put on the vehicle in order to achieve the finish that you're looking for. You know, so, sorry to call you guys out that you're Bondo Slingers. I, I'm not a big, avid fan of it. I don't like it. You know, hot rods, obviously, in order to achieve that straightness, you're going to have to put a big coat of body filler on the outside to deck it flat to achieve that perfect, flawless finish. Well, in order to get there before the flawless finish, you got to do your metal work. Well, I made a mistake, guys, and this is something I'm going to share. I don't normally share my mistakes, but I'm trying to keep this channel as real as possible. So, with that said, I had one mistake. It uh, looks like I ended up going through and doing a little stitch weld here on the bottom, right in this general area, before I laid my top coat on. And I didn't pay attention to it, but obviously, as you guys can see, there's a low spot here. I went over, I laid my top coat, I cheese grated it, and then I noticed that right here you can see the steel is coming through. That's a high spot. And then you can see here where the cheese grater went straight over it and it left the low spot. It actually didn't even touch this section here. The reason why is I heated this section up too much with the welder. I didn't pay attention. I didn't go back in and do the metal manipulation to bring this panel back out to where it was needed to be flat. Now, if you guys can listen, turn your volume up and listen to this. See if you can hear this. Hear that? That's that panel popping in and out. Now, if I pop it out, that's completely flat right there, guys. That feels great. So I know that this is the low spot, and even looking down here, I can see that it swoops in on this area towards the inner panel. So in order to achieve this, in order to get this back to be flat again, I'm going to have to manipulate this section here on the bottom. Now that's a very strong section, that's where the weld is, guys. In order to achieve that, I'm going to have to grind that Bondo out, guys, and I'm going to have to manipulate that metal to get this panel to come back out. It is what it is, and yeah, I said Bondo. It, I'm old school, guys. I say it a lot. It is what it is. I call all filler Bondo. <laughs> right in the end, that's who started it. So everyone's like, oh, I hate Bondo. Well, that's the company that started it, guys. So there's just so many other companies out there now. Everco and uh, USC and the list goes on. You know, I've been body guy for a long time. I use a lot of, a lot of different fillers, a lot of different icings and whatnot to get the job done. And... Honestly, guys, you need it to do the job half the time, so stop bad-mouthing it. Unless it's rotting and bubbling away, the body man did his job. So, with that said, I'm going to get to doing my job and show you how a professional body man is going to do this. And I say professional because most guys would just fill that. Now, I could have filled that, guys, and I didn't have to tell you that this was a low spot and that this was a mess up. I didn't have to do that, but I'm going to show you how to fix it and do it properly so that this doesn't crack and come back. So, you're going to hold this panel out on the inside right here because it's in. We're going to have to get on the inside of this wheel tub. Guess what's coming out? The BFH. Big hammer. Yeah, so that's coming out. We're going to manipulate this back on this corner on the inside so that I can let go of the pressure of this panel and it stays there with memory. Steel always wants to return back to its original state, guys. Help it do so. So, that's what I'm going to do, guys. I'm going to make this flat real quick. I'm going to run over it with a straight edge, make sure I got that ideal surface I'm looking for, and uh, we can go on with getting this done right. Alright guys, so I normally take a nice body hammer just like this. I don't use this end. I use this end. I prop it up against my stomach like this. And I'm going to use that to push on the inner wheel tub. 
to get this desired shape that I want, and I'll tap it with this while this holds it in place. Much like this, got two free hands. So, come in just like that, I'll pop it out. Then I can look in underneath while it's popped out and manipulate the section that I need. Then I can take pressure off of the hammer handle. It's nice and soft because it's wood. And if it stays, I did my job correctly. That's basically what I'm going to do. You can use your hand too, guys. I mean, anything to hold pressure on it. It doesn't, you don't have to prop it up against you. I'm just saying, techniques I use. Lightly tap around the dent so that you can bring the metal surface to the desired shape. Check it. Oh, yeah. And you'll know when you get it right. Man, it even took that high spot out. That's what's up. All right. I thought I was going to have to manipulate a little bit on the high spot, maybe for some stretching, but this is really thick steel. Um, 16 gauge or 18 gauge, something like that. Um, I ended up putting it all in the corners also as well as the other side just to strengthen up this pocket in this corner. Um, I think I explained this before in a previous video. When I first started getting into Subarus, I did a swaps. And as I do them, I'm really not looking to get the hood on it. I just want to get it out and make sure the car runs so I take it for test drives. I can see the strut towers moving up and down. There's a lot of swaying. There's really not that much structure up in the engine bay as... I would like or as you would think there would be but uh, so I just tried adding a little bit more I think these tubs are really gonna do the job man I really like that that's awesome so now I can deck this area nice and flat I brought that up to where it needs to be and uh, it doesn't look like I had at any cracking at all I got super lucky and uh, yeah awesome take a look guys Look how straight I got it. That looks awesome, right? Popped it right out. That looks great. Took that high spot out and everything. Man, that's that's what it's all about, guys. Take the time. Do the metal work. You know, I made a mistake. I fixed it. If you don't fix it now, you will regret it. Trust me. It's going to bug you. Everybody else is going to pop this hood and go, Man, he did a really good job, but... Look at that big freaking dent in that tub right there. That looks like crap. I know how the saying goes, if it ain't right, paint it white, but damn, this sucks. You know I'm right. Trolls everywhere. Yeah, so <clears throat> I had a troll that actually <laughs> private messaged me on Facebook. As you guys can see, it is 40 and 3 quarters. It's actually 1 16th or right over looks like um over three or 40 and three quarters but uh yeah from the floor let me put that back from the floor okay so we'll go to the other side <sighs> trolls well oh, hold on bad camera angle guys stick with me to the floor, as you can see, and we'll go to it, and it is. Oh man, look at that. 1 16th over 40 and 3 quarters exactly. And to top it off, I got my level on there. From the high spot to the high spot, because this guy's saying, man, you did way too much stitch welding and this and that and how do you know you got it all straight and metal manipulation? You know those strut towers are going to be off. I hate to be the guy who has to do the camber and all the alignment and this and that. And I tried explaining to him that he really didn't understand what he was talking about. But, I mean, really, I guess trolls are going to troll. So, I, I don't know why people do this. I don't, I don't know why they, they get so angry. 
at seeing things that they don't understand. Maybe that's just it. They just don't understand, and they're just mad because they don't understand it. But ignorance is bliss, and to be naive when somebody tells you why and how something is, and yet still bash them. I, I just don't get it, you know? I mean, all right. I guess, you know, so I guess I'll just stick to doing me and uh, keeping things level and in plumb and knowing how to measure suspensions and the strut tower. I mean, come on, guys. I did auto body for over, you know, 18 years, 19 years now. I think I know how to replace all this stuff. You know, I did collision repair basically my whole life. Frame machines. I mean, I'm talking full and utter wrecks. Brand new cars that would come in that were only on the road for maybe 5 to 20 miles and got totaled or almost totaled and I had to fix them. I had to make them look like they were brand new and never been wrecked before. Well, the car's brand new. Nobody's ever worked on that. Nobody knows how that goes apart. Nobody knows how that goes back together. You have to figure that out. That's part of the auto body world, guys. Knowing how cars go together and how they come apart. Why would you troll me if I told you that I did this my whole life? I don't get it. You just don't believe me? Go back a little bit and watch a little bit of my channel. I know I'm super new, but it sounds like you're super new. Right?
Uh, what you want to do before it actually sets up itself is to actually deck it down and get it as flat as possible before laying that final skim coat. Well, it's starting to set up now. It's starting to get to that gummy, you know, kind of you know position where it's a little sticky, you know, and whatnot. So use your fingernail and on the edge, use that to scrape it. And if it still feels gummy and it's all moldable, you know, it's still moldable and it's all moving and whatnot, and it kind of sticks inside your fingernail, it's tacky, it still needs to set up more. It still needs to harden more. So we're going to let this basically get to the stage where you fingernail it and it curdles off. That's the stage that we're looking for so that we can then cheese grate it. So we just got to let this set up a little bit longer. I don't like putting a lot of hardener in, guys. The ratio is for every golf ball size of filler, you're supposed to use a pea size of hardener. So basically so it doesn't set up too fast and it's the right mix ratio molecularly. It will set it up correctly. If you got too much hardener in there, guys, the filler can actually be too brittle and later down the road it dries out and cracks and you have a lot of splitting issues. So don't go crazy and don't go ham with uh, the hardener just because you're trying to do it fast. I've seen a lot of production guys do that and they just squirt it in there. They don't really care, mix it up, throw it on there, you know, and you'll see patches all over the place that are darker and lighter than others, you know, so that's just not consistency. You want to be consistent, guys. So you let this thing set up, and we're actually there now. So I'm going to grab the cheese grater, hop in this engine bay. This is a cheese grater, guys. You can get them basically any auto body supply, and uh, I'm pretty sure I've seen them in uh, Harbor Freight. Don't quote me on that, but that's what they're called, guys. So now we're going to cheese grade. You can only go in one direction. As you can see, it's coming off like cheese. Start at the edges and move your way in to your repair spot. You know that this is hard, and that's your guideline. This is all flat already, so we're going to use that as a guideline to pitch in to the filler itself. When you get it to the desired grade of the same panel next to it, you know that you can move forward because you know that you've graded this flat. This is beveled, guys. Reason why that is is so it stays rigid. So it stays nice and flat. It's not going to lie to you. It's got little fingers here. You guys can use these to hold on to. And yeah, 80% of what you put on goes back on the ground, guys. So don't think all this filler is going to be in here when I'm done. That would be crazy. Okay, I don't have any more coming off. Do not put pressure on there, guys. Let the tool do the work for you. You're not trying to work this panel. You start seeing metal or any transparency of the filler coming through, you know that that area is as far as you can deck it because you can't cheese grade metal. Far as I know. All right, well, I've got that relatively close. That's basically all you're looking at with the cheese grater. Just get it close. This is not a finishing tool, guys. Just get it decked flat. Then you can get in there with a nice block and actually deck it flat and do all the finish work that you're looking for. But yeah, literally, there goes 80% right there. Let's go ahead and sand off the other 10%. Let's leave about 10% filler on here. That's really the acquired goal. Bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> So after you cheese grate it, you just want to score it down and you can see it just basically come in and work it out. You can see the high spots where they come through and yeah, I'd say it's really close. I know that I can feather this into this just nicely by using this as a guideline. Once I get this all feathered nice and straight with a block, I then can slowly work my edges and stay away from this high spot by working all of this that I know is flat. This is really nice here. So now I can work this all now. 
and throw a nice little skim coat over it. I can block that skim coat and I can put this entire arc right here, this whole panel, in primer if I wanted to, but I don't do that. I get everything all to the desired grit and then I prime. It's a lot faster to do it that way rather than just doing sections at a time, guys. Do the whole thing all at once so in the end you can just prime the whole thing and be done with it. It actually saves on materials. So with that said, guys. All right, so now I'm going to deck all this flat. Get everything ready to go, and uh, yeah, one final skim coat should have this all done, which is really nice. I'm gonna feather all the edges here in the back, round this whole tub out, and you know this rear section, make it look as nice as possible. Basically, repeat the front, work all the way around the engine bay until completion. Prime time. Let's get this done. going to see me do a little bit more body work uh the next video will actually have more progress done i'm sorry i i'm not going to vlog it for the sheer reason that it takes a long time to just get the footage that you guys have seen so far you know hours so with that said i've still got to edit it and get it uploaded for you guys that way you guys can get a nice monday upload which is really decent um i'm really striving to get it up for you guys for around dinner time you know, I feel like that's the best time that I get my views. And, uh, yeah, that's really the time that everybody wants to sit down in YouTube. That's kind of when I do. It's my only downtime. So, thanks, guys, for watching. Please, please, please subscribe. It really helps me. I'm trying to promote my channel as much as possible and promote what I can do as well. You know, and, and really show you guys and document it as well. You know, if, if you guys see something I'm doing wrong, by all means, call me out. You know, this <laughs> this vlog was definitely for you haters, you know. You guys give me inspiration. You guys don't understand that, you know. The, the more feedback you give me, whether it's negative or positive, I don't mind it because it's just feedback. I'm still going to do me. 
I honestly don't care if you don't like me or don't like what I'm doing, you know, or if you don't believe me that I can do what I can do. So, thank you. I appreciate your support. I appreciate your feedback no matter what. Please subscribe. Please, please, please hit that like button below. That's what really helps my channel grow. This is Bill Schneider in Rumble Garage. I work on only cars with the stars. Have a great day, guys.